All right, uh, good afternoon. Um, I'm Jim Spann from um, Marshall Space Flight Center on detail to NASA headquarters currently. And I'm gonna share with you some an exciting opportunity that is coming our way that um, actually you may have heard some of this in the news um, about, uh, thank you, about uh, the opportunities for science in the Deep Space Gateway. So um, over the next 15 minutes, I wanna share a little bit about what the Deep Space Gateway is all about, kind of uh, some of the um, ways that the community can participate as well as um, some of the ideas that are being uh, considered in terms of uh, rolling this out. So, how do we do this? Can, what, let me do it. So, uh, the Deep Space Gateway is uh, a part of a, a phased plan that the agency has to um, extend our presence beyond uh, the low Earth orbit. And, um, and while, because the uh, space policy um, for the agency and the, and the country, be honest with you, is uh, being developed now with the new uh, Space Council that um, is under the Vice President. Uh, this may be slightly dated. Uh, nevertheless, uh, the idea is that um, we want to expand the human presence beyond the low Earth orbit where we have uh, established a well-established um, uh, presence with the uh, International Space Station and many other activities. Uh, returning to the moon, and most recently, like three days ago, uh, they announced that uh, we're going to, um, with uh, um, participating independent uh, companies and industry, uh, a program to return humans to the moon and eventually uh, to Mars and beyond. And so the idea of having uh, the presence in the, in the near um, cislunar vicinity now has really uh, become more real as, uh, as um, uh, over the last several months. So as part of that is um, obviously we've got to have transportation systems to get there, but also a platform in the uh, lunar surface or near the lunar surface to um, conduct various activities. So the Deep Space Gateway is basically a platform in the vicinity of the moon that um, will um, help us establish a sustainable presence beyond the low Earth orbit. Uh, it'll, it'll build on the expertise and the experience and the technologies that we've developed with the International Space Station, but now uh, extend it to um, the nearest, um, well, our, our only moon, and, uh, and beyond going into Mars. Um, it uh, basically will have several, act, uh, several uh, purposes or reasons for doing it. One is to advance the human spaceflight operation and techniques, because as we expand farther, um, the, the, not only are we farther from, the, from our home planet, where um, if something were to go wrong, obviously you, you know, nowadays you can get there in a couple of days or whatever, or very quickly to ISS, but as we go out farther, we have to have technologies so that we can sustain ourselves in the event of issues. Um, it's also to characterize the human and health performance as we plan to extend our presence beyond uh, even our, our near-Earth environment, even the moon, um, we're going to have to understand how, how the human body um, performs in long, uh, over long periods of time. We've done that with ISS, we've learned a lot, we're going to continue doing that. And then there's also the opportunity to conduct high-priority science, and that's a little bit where I want to focus. Um, and obviously when you think about going to the moon, you think, yeah, we can do a lot of lunar science or some planetary stuff. But if, if the agency is going to put a platform up there, there's a lot of other science that we can leverage that perhaps we might not have thought of doing um, on our own. But because there is that asset up there, it opens up possibilities that we ought to um, consider. And so the Deep Space Gateway is, is the terminology that is being used um, for the concept right now about being um, in the lunar vicinity. And so in the first phase, you can see here that um, there's going to be, this is, this is just a concept, and so um, you know, there's no uh, intent of, uh, of, of giving the impression that the design is finalized or anything like that, but in order for the conversation to be had, we, uh, we have to start with something, and this is the current concept that we have where we'll have a deep space gateway, which it looks like uh, kind of a, little, a small space station, but it's not a space station, it's a deep space gateway. And uh, so don't get confused. 
Um, and so in this, it's, gonna, it's not going to be attended 24-7, um, 12 months a year by humans, but they'll have temporary periods of time when the plan is for astronauts to go up there for um, two or three months, conduct some experiments, do some uh, tests, and then come on back. And so it has to be autonomous in that sense. Uh, the Orion capsule is uh, the fairing um, mechanism that will get our humans up there. And eventually, the Deep Space Gateway then will start uh, working with um, something called a Deep Space Transport. And this will be the first initial aspects of going from the lunar vicinity um, all the way into Mars. Um, obviously, associated with this, there are plans, and these are plans, uh, using the new uh, space launch system, SLS, uh, the big giant rocket. And, uh, and, and with stages, building it up for the Deep Space Gateway and ultimately preparing to, uh, for transit to Mars. There have been a lot of um, uh, thought about, well, where do you place this Deep Space Gateway? There are several options um, in the lunar vicinity. Um, and so these are some of the um, types of orbits that have been discussed. And uh, depending on uh, what the activity is going on at the Deep Space Gateway at that time, um, it, may, it may transition from one type of orbit to another. So it has to have some sort of uh, ability to, um, some propulsive um, capability to go from one orbit to the other. And as it's being replenished and as other, um, um, as other uh, missions are coming up uh, through the space launch, trans uh, uh, space launch system and, or, or the commercial um, uh, rockets, uh, they can replenish its fuel system and that sort of stuff to be able to uh, conduct its um, emission. And so, as you can see, there, there are several um, orbits that are um, thought to be possible. Some are very near the lunar surface, some kind of go back far away. And it really depends on what we want to do um, on that um, um, phase of the mission. So here's just a, uh, um, a cartoon showing kind of the type of, the type of uh, views that one might get. Uh, some of the orbits that are, are being considered, part of the idea is if we're going to look back toward the Earth to study the Earth as a system or study the space surrounding the Earth, geospace, we want to avoid looking at the moon. And so um, this, is, this particular orbit, um, while it's, kind of, it's sped up obviously a lot, you can see the Earth most of the time and there are times that the moon will eclipse uh, the, um, the Earth. Uh, just, and so this cartoon is just to kind of give you a sense that, uh, yes, a lot of um, activity has gone on, a lot of thought and uh, processes in terms of trying to understand uh, what the possibilities are. And so uh, these are some of the things that now as we, I'm going to stand over here. Um, these are some of the things that um, are being considered from a science perspective uh, on the Deep Space Gateway. And so um, since it's a platform up there, there's going to be possibility for doing experiments on the inside. There are experiments uh, mounted on the outside. Maybe it's a pointing platform that's looking toward the sun to measure um, the variability of the sun. Some may be fixed um, on, the, on the platform, or it also could be like ISS, which deploys uh, CubeSats and other small satellites. It could be used for that. Um, there are going to be pressurized and unpressurized systems, particularly since humans are going up there, they're going to have to be pressurized. Um, and so there's also going to be an airlock. And so this may be also a, a way station where, as we do uh, um, investigations on the surface of the moon, um, we may bring back samples. I don't know. Um, well, now that we're going to establish presence on the moon, obviously there, there's going to have to be, there's going to be opportunity to use this, this, uh, this platform as a, uh, a way station prior, prior to sending things all the way back to the, um, the Earth. Uh, finally, um, there are... Um, you can do tele teleoperating activities, particularly if they're on the moon. If, you're, if, a, if a human presence is not required on the moon, you could operate it from the Deep Space Gateway. You could actually operate it from the Earth also. There would be about a four or five second delay. Nevertheless, there are opportunities for, um, um, for that sort of science to be conducted, which again will, will be very good practice for when we get to uh, Mars. And then, uh, so again, remote controlled, and, and then anything that might have crew assistance. So one of the ideas, and we've done this already with the shuttle, is that we've um, done servicing missions, particularly on the Hubble Space Telescope. It's had several servicing missions. It has extended the life of that great observatory, and it served us very, very well. Now, many of the observatories that are planned right now are not planned to be serviced, but some are. This could be a great place for the particularly the large astrophysics um, telescopes for the future to be serviced. 
And so this is uh, kind of um, uh, another picture of kind of the idea of the concept, but the point I want to uh, draw your attention to is that there's going to be a Deep Space Gateway workshop in the Denver area, uh, February 27 through March 1. 27 through March 1. So mark that on your calendar. I'll give you a few minutes if you want to. And um, the other important thing that you need to take note of is that these are tons of words right here, and I apologize uh, for, for being so wordy, but the fact is that this workshop is, is an opportunity for us to articulate some of the science that can be done from this platform. And it goes beyond just uh, planetary science. We're looking for Earth science to be able to study our planet as, uh, from, a, from a, a larger vantage point. Um, geosynchronous, we can't even access the polar regions. From way out at lunar distances, we can. And you actually see some conjugate aspects of that. Uh, in heliophysics, the study of the connection of the Earth and the Sun, this would be a great way to study the solar wind interaction, to observe the Sun, to observe the Earth and its radiation belts and the magnetosphere in general. Um, the uh, planetary, obviously, it's very obvious that um, we can uh, do a lot of lunar science, prepare ourselves for human presence on, on Mars and beyond, and then astrophysics in terms primarily uh, in terms of servicing um, future observatories, but also there are other aspects um, of uh, having several points around to measure maybe triangulation, some of these uh, great uh, um, uh, collisions of, of black holes and, and dwarf um, uh, stars that we've been reading about. Um, and uh, this uh, having a, a platform or a measuring observing uh, capability up at this deep space gateway in addition to down on the planet would really help. And so, uh, in order to do this, um, we've, uh, there are several people, some of these people may, you already may know, are, are being, have been working together for about a year now to pull this together. Um, up at headquarters, we have, um, out of headquarters, we have an, kind of an executive committee with the SMD and the Human Exploration Mission uh, Directorate. Uh, we've got folks at JSC, Goddard, and Marshall, and then a, a plethora of, of other people at the various centers uh, supporting and pulling together the program for the meeting that's going to be held in um, February. And so um, the, the output of this is really to look at um, decadal type science, not to try to um, um, prioritize anything, that's something that the decadal will look at, but just get things, get ideas out on the table that can feed into the de decadal surveys. Um, also look, identifying what knowledge gaps might exist um, so that um, could um, help not only uh, the science area, but also the, the human exploration area in terms of identifying um, areas of architecture that they might want to include. And then during look at um, science areas that might be done jointly with uh, the human exploration, not only in, in terms of using their facilities, but also using astronauts and um, and other research that might really pertain specifically to having an extended human presence um, beyond uh, low Earth orbit. And so with that, um, I'm going to um, leave you with just an example. And this is kind of an odd example just because this is JWST, which turns out not to be serviceable. So it won't be visiting the Deep Space Gateway. Nevertheless, it gives you a sense of the um, uh, complex nature of, of these new um, large telescopes that are that we're going to continue to be putting up there and how having an, uh, having the ability to upgrade those to service those um, will um, be a tremendous asset and uh, the deep space gateway that is one of the ways that that it that it can really enable a uh, great science to take place and so with that I've kind of gone over my time and so as the JWST unfolds I'll open this up for questions